solved problem insolvency of a partner decision in garner versus murray illustration the balance sheet of x y and z showed as under when they resolved to dissolve their business liabilities amount assets amount on the liability side creditor 6600 excess capital 12000 vice capital 9000 chats capital 3000 Total liabilities thirty thousand six hundred. On the asset side, cash at bank hundred, debtors four thousand five hundred, stock sixteen thousand, machinery ten thousand. Total assets thirty thousand six hundred. Debtors stock and machinery realize fifty percent of the book value, and expenses of realization come to rupees fifty. Jet is insolvent and is unable to bring in anything. in respect of his debt to the firm show the final adjustments of accounts under a prior to and b after the decision in garner versus murray case before solving this problem let us discuss the implications under garner versus murray case and how to deal with each element in the decision given under garner versus murray case to solve the illustration under two conditions one prior to the decision in garner versus murray and after the decision in garner versus murray case decision in garner versus murray loss arising from insolvency of a partner where a partner is insolvent and is unable to satisfy his indebtedness to the firm the final adjustment among the partners will have to be made in accordance with the decision in the english case of garner versus murray in this case it was ruled that in the absence of any agreement to the contrary the deficiency on the insolvent partners capital account must be borne by the other solvent partners in proportion to their capitals after each solvent partner has brought in cash to the extent of his own share of loss on realization in other words it was held in garner versus murray that in the absence of agreement when the capital amount of an insolvent partner is in debit the solvent partners must first contribute cash to the extent of their respective share of loss on realization and the balance of cash remaining after paying off the firm's creditors is to be divided among the solvent partners in proportion to their capital the effect of this decision is to distinguish between a loss arising from trading and one arising from a partner failing to make good the debit balance on his capital account thus whereas any loss on trading or even loss arising from realization must be borne by the all the partners including the defaulting partner in the proportion in which the partners share profits or losses the loss caused by the deficiency of an insolvent partner must be borne by the remaining partners in proportion to their capitals it needs to be pointed out that however the above ruling in garner versus murray is subject to any agreement to the contrary that may exist among the partners in the connection thus if the partners have agreed that all the losses or gains including losses from the capital deficit of a partner shall be shared by the partners in their profit sharing ratio such an agreement will hold good and the solvent partners will then bear the insolvent partners deficiency in those agreed proportions the most important point underlying the decision in garner versus murray seems to be that the loss arising from the deficiency of an insolvent partner should be borne by the insolvent partners in proportion to their respective capitals as they stood at the date of partners determined upon dissolution and prior to any adjustment arising from the realization of assets the first thing therefore that will need to be determined is what were the capitals of the partners at the date of dissolution for a proper answer to this question it is necessary to ascertain whether the partners capitals were fixed or floating quantities it should first be seen whether there are any items in the given balance sheet at the date of dissolution which would call 
for adjustment in the ordinary course. Thus, if there is a balance on reserve account which would represent undistributed profits or a credit or debit balance of profit and loss account standing unadjusted on the balance sheet, such balance should be transferred to the capital accounts of all the partners in their profit sharing proportions so as to ascertain the actual capitals that existed at the date of partners determined upon resolution. For it would be in the proportions that the solvent partners would bear the insolvent partner's capital deficiency. Further, as each solvent partner is required to bring in cash to the extent of his respective share of loss arising from realization, it becomes still more necessary to see that the realization account should show only the items of profits or losses as are the natural outcome of dissolution. Evidently, therefore, any other gain or loss already existing at the date of last balance sheet and as it would ordinarily have been transferred to the profit and loss account but has been so held over and left unadjusted should first be adjusted in order to ascertain the real capitals of the partners at the date of dissolution. Where the capitals are fixed quantities, the question of adjustment of capitals as at the date of dissolution will not arise where the capitals are fixed. For in that case, the insolvent partner's deficiency would be borne by the solvent partners in proportion to the respective capitals which have been agreed by the partners to be in fixed quantities. If therefore are any undistributed profits at the date of dissolution shown in the balance sheet under reserve fund, contingency fund or any account similar named, they, these would have to be apportioned and credited to the process directly in their current accounts in their respective profit sharing proportions and not in their capital accounts. Similarly, if there happens to be any losses held over and left unadjusted on the balance sheet, the same will have to be adjusted directly on the current accounts of the partners in their usual profit sharing proportion. Each partner's share of loss or gain on realization account should also be debited are credited to his respective current account and where there is loss on realization the corresponding amount brought in cash by each of the solvent partners should be credited to his current account in fact where the capitals are fixed all the necessary adjustments should be done on the current accounts of the partners and the balance on capital accounts should only be taken as a guide to determine the proportions in which the solvent partners are to bear the insolvent partners deficiency. In order to ascertain the ultimate deficiency of the insolvent partner, it would be necessary to transfer the balance on his current account to his capital account. The total deficiency of the insolvent partner having thus been determined, the same should be transferred to the current account of the solvent partners in proportion to their capitals as shown by their respective capital accounts. This being done, it would now become necessary to transfer the balance on current account of each solvent partner to his respective capital account so that his ultimate position with the firm may be determined. Each partner would now stand to be paid out the balance as shown by his capital account. Where the capitals are fluctuating and point to be borne in mind is that once the true capital of each partner at the date of dissolution is determined by the adjustment of any losses or gains held over and appearing in the ba last balance sheet, it would be in these proportions that the solvent partners will bear the insolvency partner's deficiency. The loss or gain on realization may in this case be adjusted straight on the capital account of the partners where there is a loss on realization each solvent partner will be assumed to have brought his respective share thereof in cash and the same having been credited to his capital account, his original capital balance will remain unaffected. In case of gain on realization, the share of each partner may be credited to his respective capital account, but in this case, the fact that the balance on capital account of each solvent partner prior to the adjustment of his gain would be the basis of 
apportioning the insolvent partnership deficiency should not be lost sight of once this is done it is immaterial whether all the necessary adjustments as above explained are made directly on the capital accounts or through the current accounts a large majority of professional accountants now seem to be of opinion that the bringing in of cash by the solvent partners to make good their share of loss on realization is not necessary where the problem is worked on the assumption that the solvent partners do not contribute cash towards their respective share of loss on realization the point that needs to be stressed in that case is that the proportions in which the solvent partners should bear the insolvent partners deficiency should be based on their respective capitals as they should prior to the charging of such loss now coming to the problem the balance sheet of x y and z showed as under when they resolved to dissolve their business liabilities amount assets amount on the liability side credit are 6600 excess capital 12000 vice capital 9000 jets capital 3000 total liabilities 30600 and on the asset side cash at bank 100 debtors 4500 stock 16000 machinery 10000 total assets 30600 debtors stock and machinery realize 50% of the book value and expenses of realization come to rupees 50 Jet is insolvent and is unable to bring in anything in respect of his debt to the firm. So the final adjustment of accounts, A prior to and B after the decision in Garner v. Murray case. Solution A method adopted prior to decision in Garner v. Murray realization account on the debit side to sundry assets thirty thousand five hundred. to bank cost of realization 50 to payments to creditors 6600 by sundry creditors 6600 by bank sundry excess realized 15150 by capital accounts last transferred x 5100 y 5100 z 5100 the losses are distributed equally because there is no mention about the sharing of profits in the problem so it is understood that they are born equally among the partners let us prepare jet's capital account as he has become insolvent and then we will be able to know how x and y share the deficit among themselves from jet's capital account by balance brought down 3000 to realization account one third share of loss 5100 total loss is equal to 2100 shared equally among excess capital account transfer 1050 by vice capital account 1050 now excess capital account by balance brought down 12000 as per balance sheet to realization account one third share of loss 5100 jets capital account half share of deficiency 1050 to bank 5850 vice capital account by balance brought down 9000 to realization account half One third share of loss to realization account. One third share of loss five thousand one hundred. Jet's capital account half share of deficiency one zero five zero. Bank account two eight five zero. Bank account to balance brought down one hundred to realization account assets realized fifteen one fifty two fifty. By realization account cost of realization fifty. By realization account payment to creditor six thousand six hundred. Excess capital account five eight five zero. And vice capital account two eight five zero. Now coming to B method as laid down in Garner versus Murray realization account. Two sundry assets thirty thousand five hundred. Two bank cost of realization fifty. Two payment to creditor six thousand six hundred. And the credit set by sundry creditor six thousand six hundred. By sundry assets realized fifteen two fifty. By capital accounts losses transferred equally five thousand one hundred. X five thousand one hundred to Y. 5102 jet this realization accounts same both in the case of garner versus murray or without garner versus murray also let us prepare jet's capital account as he is insolvent by balance brought down 3000 from the balance sheet and the two realization account half 
one third share of loss, 5,100. So, the excess capital account transfer, 1,200. Vice capital account transfer, 900. 5,100. Excess capital account by balance brought down 12,000. By bank 5,100. To realization account 5,100. To bank 10,800. To judge capital account transfer 1,200. Vice capital account by balance brought down 9,000. To realization account 5,100. To bank 8,100. To judge capital account transfer 900. By bank 5100. Bank account. To balance brought down 100. To realization account assets realized 15,250. To excess capital account 5100. To vice capital account 5100. By realization account cost of realization 50. By realization payment to creditor 6600. By excess capital account 10,800. By vice capital account 8100. In the next lecture, we will discuss about single entry.